Hi, I'm Underbelly, and you suck at drums. In the previous lesson, we learned all about beats, bars, and time signatures. Today, we're going to apply that fundamental knowledge to write our very first drum beats. But even Derek knows that to write sick beats, you got to start with sick sounds. So that's why I'm including my very own drum sample pack for free in the video description. Feel free to download it so you can follow along. Let's get started. Okay, so check it. Let's start by dragging in my amazing drum pack into our Ableton sidebars, just by clicking and dragging it over to the places section. And wowzers, there it is. So now that we have a drum folder ready to go, Let's uh, create a drum rack. So let's go to the drum section here and double click on drum rack. And we'll go back to my drums folder here and get at least one sound from each category, just for the variety. Okay, so now we have a good variety of sounds in our drum rack. Let's create a new empty clip on this track just by double clicking in one of the clip slots. Now, Ableton has created a one bar loop here, and according to our time signature, there's four beats per bar. The question is, which beats does the kick land on? Well, usually the kick lands on the first and third beat of the measure. So to add this, let's turn on the pencil tool by pressing B on our keyboards, B for pencil, and put the kick on the one and three. Okay, let's take a listen. That's amazing. But what about the snare? Well, since the one and three are already taken, let's put the snare on the two and four. Now, I notice a lot of producers, especially if they're working in genres like trap, dubstep, future bass, reggae, working at very high BPMs like 150, 160, but the drum loops they're doing feel like they're going half that current speed. How do they create this effect? Well, to do it, all you gotta do is put your snare or clap on the third beat of the measure as opposed to the two and four. And I'll get rid of the kick here underneath. Let's take a listen. So this is called a halftime groove. And you can see instead of feeling like we're at 120, we're now feeling like whatever half of 120 is. And later in the course, I'll show you guys how to make some sick halftime beats. But for now, let's put the snare back on the two and four. Okay. We'll leave the snare alone for now and focus on the kick. While yes, the first kick generally lands at the beginning of the bar, with the second kick, we can basically put it wherever we want. So instead of putting it right on the three, let's put it halfway between the third and fourth beat of the measure, right here. Now, halfway between beats is called the and of a beat, as in one and two and three and. You can see this way of counting by right clicking and changing the grid size to eighth notes. So when we're counting ands, we're counting at an eighth note pace. One and two and three and four and. Cool, let's take a listen. Oh shit, that's the sickest beat I ever heard. Let's add another kick on the end of the fourth beat. Oh, it's amazing. But say we wanted that last kick to hit even later. I'm gonna change the grid back to the 16th note grid just by right clicking here. Now let's just nudge it one more block to the right. So instead of dividing the grid into eighth notes and counting at an and pace, one and two and, we're now counting at a 16th note pace, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, so on. So this last kick is landing on the uh of the fourth beat. Let's take a listen. Okay, so it's not bad, but I feel like it could be better. The question here is, is this kick landing on a strong or weak spot? Well, generally, the strongest spots in a clip are right on the beat, as in the one, two, three, four. The weaker spots would be on the and of the beat, as in one, and, two, and, three, and. And finally, the weakest spots would be on the E or a uh of a beat. One E and a. Uh. 
this last kick is landing on the uh of the fourth beat. So it's already in a pretty weak spot. Plus, it's at the very end of this loop. So how do we show to the listener that this kick is weaker? Well, let's get out of the draw tool for now by pressing B again, B for pencil, and you'll see these little close pin looking things at the bottom of each hit. This controls the velocity, which is basically the volume of each individual sound. So let's lower the velocity of this last kick and take a listen. So much more lifelike, you feel like Derek's actually in there. So paying attention to which hits are landing in strong versus weak places and adjusting the velocity accordingly is a great way to make your drums sound more lifelike. Okay, let's go back to our clip here and rename this clip just by hitting Command R and calling it I, short for intro. So this is a pretty low energy loop, kind of boring, so let's duplicate it and rename this new clip and call it A. Now for A, we want the energy level of the drums to go up. And the reason why we're bothering with a whole nother clip in the first place is because we don't want to get stuck in a four bar loop hellhole and just make lo-fi for the rest of our lives. We want to have options when we're composing our tracks. So let's go over to the A section and think about how can we raise the energy of our drums. Well, one option is to take an existing element like our kick and make it more active throughout the loop. So I'll turn on my B for Benzel tool and I don't know, just click and drag and fill in every goddamn spot here. Let's take a listen. Oh, Here's the sitch. It's definitely higher energy, but it also sounds terrible. So when we're trying to raise the energy from one clip to the next, we want the changes we make to be really obvious and present throughout the loop. But at the same time, we don't want it to sound like Derek fell asleep on the keyboard again. So let's find a balance here. Maybe I'll place a kick on the end of the first beat, on the E of the second beat. Maybe I'll leave that there. Uh, I don't know, another kick after the last snare. Let's take a listen. Okay, well, that's not bad. Let's hear the difference from I to A. Okay. Maybe one more. Okay, so that's the level of energy distinction we're looking for here. But here's the problem. Even though this is the sickest loop in the world, it's only one bar long, so this shit's gonna get old fast. So let's hit duplicate over on the left side to make this whole loop twice as long. And while it looks bigger, it doesn't actually feel any different because the second half is the same as the first. So let's create some sort of slight variation here. Maybe, I don't know, I'll move one of these kicks a little to the right. Let's see what that does. easy. Okay, it's very low effort, but now it takes twice as long for the listener to get bored. All right, so adding one change from I to A is good, but I really want the energy of A to go up significantly. So let's go for a second change. Maybe instead of taking an existing element and making it more active, let's try adding a new element, like, I don't know, our hi-hat. Now, usually the hi-hat kind of mimics a metronome. It goes at a regular pace, maybe on every quarter note, eighth note, or sixteenth note, just to keep time throughout the whole groove. So again, let's just do the same thing we did with the kick and, uh, you know. <laughs> looks like the hi-hat is going too fast for my tastes. So let's hit Command Z here and change the grid size to eighth notes and do it again. Let's draw the hi-hat in on every eighth note instead. Take a listen. Okay, that's a lot more reasonable. Now, the problem here though is that the hi-hat is sounding so boring and lifeless. How can we add some spice to this? Well, earlier we saw that paying attention to which hits are landing in strong versus weak spots is a great way to make our drums sound more lifelike. So maybe on the hi-hats that are hitting on the and of each beat here, let's perhaps lower the velocity on those. And we can do this pretty easily just by lowering the second hi-hat, highlighting the first two hi-hats, and just hitting Command D over and over again. Let's hear it. Beautiful. So we got two changes going from I to A. Let's hear the difference. I, real simple, A. Okay. 
Now I'm looking for one last change here. So three changes in total. What could that be? Well, perhaps we can make the uh, trap snare more active as well. So again, same trick, B for Benzel, drawing it everywhere in the Okay, earlier we saw that the placement of the snare determines the pace of the whole groove. Whether the snare is hitting on the 2 and 4 for regular time or on the 3 for half time. Now, the thing is, if we put the snare everywhere, we can't tell which snares are the important ones, the ones we're nodding our heads to, and which are secondary. So when adding snares, it helps to make it quite obvious which snares are important by only adding snares in the weakest possible spots. Let me show you what I mean. Let's change the grid size to 16th notes and only add snares on the E or a uh of a beat because we learned earlier that those are the weakest possible spots. And I think also it would be best to avoid adding snares on top of kicks. That way it sounds a little less cluttered. So perhaps we'll add a snare right here on the E of one, um, maybe right here, E of three. Um, let's see here. Let's just try filling in as many spots as we can and then we'll subtract later. Okay, that's better. Maybe we'll actually subtract one of these kicks here. Okay. Now, I really like the pattern I have in the first half here, but it's still a little hard to tell which snares are strong and which are weak. So let's take the snares on the two and four and leave those strong, but the new snares that we're adding, let's go ahead and lower the velocity on those so it's very clear which snares are strong and which snares are weak. And let's just, you know, delete this and just copy the pattern here into the second half by hitting Command D. Nice, let's add one more snare at the end so that the second half is different from the first. Okay, now let's hear the difference from I to A. I, super low energy. Oh, wowzers, you'll never have to make lo-fi again. Okay, so check it. Just a review, from I to A, we want three changes all raising the energy. A change could be a drum element getting added, or it could be taking an existing drum element and making it more active. For something to count as a change, it needs to be immediately obvious, present throughout the loop, but not so busy that it just sounds like Derek beating his head against the wall, you dingus. So see if you can practice this in a variety of different genres, BPMs, time signatures, whatever. And in the next lesson, we'll add two more drum clips to the ones we started today. I'm Underbelly. Have a great day.